Hello, everyone. I'm Guna from Analytics Plus, and thank you for joining us today. I'm a technical consultant, and I specialize in helping customers build custom analytics that help answer business critical questions. So please post your questions using the questions panel on the right hand side, bottom corner of your screen, and I'll answer them at end of this webinar. Analytics Plus has helped a lot of customers get the best out of their service test plus data by providing deep analytics on help desk operations. With the out of the box uh, reports, we are able to uh, you know, tightly integrate our service desk and give you 300 plus reports and dashboards. These dashboards uh, reduce your report building time by 30%. So as a part of uh, continuously expanding our help desk reporting capabilities, I'm thrilled to announce the launch of analytics for request history projects and solution modules. Let me brief you on what analytics you would get on these modules. So this is the overview of what you would get on the different modules that we are uh, launching today. So the request history analytics helps you draw a timeline of tickets life cycle uh, through identifying the status changes, tracking the uh, technician changes, uh, and also tracking the group changes, which affects your SLAs and your resolution time. So we also introduced project analytics, which helps you track the overall progress of the projects and helps you understand the reality of each project. So the solution analytics helps you determine the effectiveness of the solution and its usage and helps you avoid repetitive and time consuming tasks. I always believe that bad decisions are often made due to lack of reliable and real time information. So it's really important to analyze the data before you make any important decision. So with that said, uh, I would like to discuss some of the common challenges that you uh, face in your help desk. So the first challenge would be on the longer resolution times. So there are many factors that basically affects your resolution time. And the next one is the uh, repetitive and the time consuming tasks. You also uh, do not have a proper for reporting module or you do not have a proper metrics that could actually track your help desk progress. And we also don't address the uh, knowledge or the skill gap of the technicians. So these are the uh, common challenges uh, in the help desk and you can uncover uh, you know, solutions to all these challenges if you analyze the previously unseen patterns and their dependencies. So the new analytics uh, uh, introduced uh, analyzes uh, or you know, addresses these challenges by helping you uh, identify the problem areas. It helps you uh, minimize your uh, resolution time and maximize your satisfaction rate. And it also, uh, you know, avoid the repetitive and time consuming actions that are really required. All right, uh, let's get started. Tracking the amount of time spent in each statuses. So before we uh, begin, I have a question for you here. How many of you here know the average amount of time a request spends on an honorable status? Well, uh, you literally have to open each request and go through the history of the request to answer this question. So I would show you how you can attract the amount of time spent by not doing that and uh, how the odd default reports that we have help you solve this problem. But if you don't have answer to this question, then your help task is in serious trouble 
and you will end up gaining more Hanafi customers due to excess wait times. I often uh, hear uh, you know, about the technicians changing the uh, status of the request from open to on hold, the most common transition in the help desk, which increases the uh, resolution time, as I said, unnecessarily. So and also there are also uh, a wide range of uh, reasons that could increase your uh, you know, wait time on your ticket. Now let's take a look on uh, how the out of the box report tracks your uh, status changes and gives you a better visibility. So I have a report that has the uh, request status on the X axis and the request ID on the Y axis. So I see that uh, you know the request ID one has spent 131 minutes so roughly two hours on the open status, and it's moved to on-hold status, you know, where it spent 94 minutes, uh, an hour and a half approximately on the on-hold status before it was closed. So why do you think, uh, you know, a technician would move the request uh, from the open to on-hold status, and then it was closed? So maybe he is not uh, very confident about the resolution that he has provided, or it could be he wanted the uh, you know the auto assignments not to happen on his bucket. So there are multiple reasons, and you can figure that out if you uh, find a similar pattern across uh, the other request. So if you tend to uh, you know uh, find the similar pattern across other requests uh, using this report, it could point to one of the following reasons. It could be uh, due to the uh, late assignment of a, a new ticket, or it could be the ignorance about uh, a customer response, or it could be the poor communication of uh, issue uh, to the support team, or it could be even the delayed response from the customer itself. So it's so this report gives you uh, you know the overall time spent in each uh, status of the request, and we also have a, a dedicated dashboard uh, that pretty much has uh, a few more important metrics like the average uh, status change per request, and it also uh, talks about the average on hold time uh, and the average time in open status. So the KPIs uh, in the uh, dashboards uh, are uh, you know, plotted as a widgets. So it easily compares the present value uh, with the previous value. So I see that uh, you know, the average on hold time uh, has drastically incre you know, increased from 10 minutes to 30 minutes. And the average time in open status has, has decreased uh, you know, from 45 minutes to 30 minutes. So it gives me a visibility on uh, where my help desk is towards in terms of uh, achieving my uh, resolution by awarding the wait times. And also it talks about the most frequent status change. So it seems to be from on hold to, I mean, from open to on hold. So the other um, reports that are in the dashboards talk about the uh, quarter on quarter comparison of time spent in each status and the uh, yearly comparison of time spent in each status. So it also talks about the most frequent uh, status change for the last 12 months and so on. So this dashboard would definitely help you identify the backlogs and create a remedy that applies to your entire help desk or to an IT uh, uh, service. Wait. And I know for sure uh, that the next question that comes to your mind after looking at the status history dashboard would be, can I know the amount of time a technician spends on each request or a dashboard to understand the technician history? Yes, we heard you and uh, you know, also got you covered. Before I uh, deep dive into this, I want to recall an incident uh, that happened a month ago. My mobile internet suddenly stopped working during one of my overseas trips. After trying out some basic troubleshooting, I decided to uh, uh, you know, call my uh, phone company to get some help. Uh, 
Uh, so the first technician whom I spoke with confirmed that there is no network issues and suggested I change the network settings and do a restart. That worked, but only for a very short time. In the next three hours, trust me, I ended up talking to multiple technicians for the same issue and I was really pissed off because everyone I spoke to was asking me to do something a previous technician had already suggested or asked me for information I had already shared. You know, the same settings change were suggested by all technicians in the next three hours, and I was without internet uh, for the next two days, actually. In the end, you know, it all turned out to be an issue on their network. So I'm sure everyone would have come across this scenario once in a while. So let's let's apply this scenario in the help desk terms. Um, let's assume uh, the customer logs a request. Uh, the first technician who handles this tries to resolve the request without an approach. Then he transfers the ticket to the next technician without a proper note on the steps followed. And the next technician begins the investigation with the same set of questions, which the first technician asked. And this process goes on as long as the, the request, uh, you know, uh, lands to a technician who is trained or aware of the solution. So let's take a look at uh, the report that talks about the, uh, you know, the technician uh, change. And it also tells me how much time a technician spends on a request. So for uh, for example, I see on um, request ID 7, John Roberts has spent 25 minutes and then it is transferred to Jennifer and she spent around 35 minutes and then it was moved to unassigned. So this is, uh, uh, this is not a normal pattern that you get in your help desk, but this sort of tells me whether the technician lack expertise in handling the request. And you know, it was moved to un you know, the unassigned state without an action, which increases your resolution time. The wait time of the uh, customer has increased anomalously. So I figured out the common uh, you know, reasons for the reassignments, right? So it, it, it sort of tells me like uh, the common reasons for frequent reassignments are the lack of understanding or the inexperienced technicians. So technicians don't take uh, ownership or the request don't get assigned to the right technician during the first assignment. So uh, the technician history dashboard uh, sort of delivers uh, the insights about the average technician change per request, the average time uh, a request uh, you know, stays on the unassigned state or the average uh, tech change per request. So the average time spent uh, on the unassigned state uh, seems to be decreasing for the help desk because uh, it was earlier on 132 minutes and it's now brought down to 60 minutes, which is definitely a good sign. Right, and also I see the most frequent tech change seems to be from uh, Jennifer to Ether. So I, I think Jennifer always transfer the tickets to Ether because he, uh, he, she thinks that Ether can resolve this problem uh, because he could be, uh, you know, uh, the more experienced person or uh, can uh, understand the problem and give solutions according to that. All right, so uh, the other metrics like the uh, year on year comparison or the quarter on quarter comparison uh, of the time spent by the technicians, uh, you know, helps you identify any gaps in your uh, technician knowledge or the skill set and explore viable options for training and development to improve the expertise of your technicians and reduce the frequent ticket reassignment. Now, so now we have seen the, uh, you know, the ability of Analytics Plus to track the technician history details. So similarly, we can also track the uh, frequent group reassignments. Uh, the more diverse your company and its uh, support offerings are, the more diverse your help desk group will be. So I have some 
critical factors that contributes to uh, increase in your resolution time and affects your SLA compliances. The first in the bucket is the waiting time at different groups. And, uh, you know, the second point would be about the lack of process automation. And the third one is about the poor access to information. So these are some critical factors that contributes to, uh, you know, to be increasing your uh, resolution time and affects your SLA performance. So similar to the, uh, uh, the status history and technician history analytics, the group history analytics helps you figure out, um, you know, how each group changes impacts your SLAs and see how we can improve your resolution time by reducing this unnecessary group transitions. So let's take a look at this report that compares the time spent in each group. And it is obvious that the request on an average spent uh, around 150 minutes uh, without a group assignment for this year across all quarters, right? And so you need to uh, probably, uh, you know, automate your uh, process in terms of assigning tickets uh, to the uh, uh, to the groups before it get assigned to any specific technicians or uh, it could be uh, the poor access to all this request for technicians to work on so uh, we also have a dedicated dashboard for this uh, group history analysis uh, that talks about uh, the average number of group changes and the average time uh, without a group association so uh, you know it sort of increased uh, this month. I seems to uh, find uh, close to eight minutes of increase in the uh, wait time. Uh, and the average time spent in each group uh, seems to be, again, increased from 45 minutes to 51 minutes. So this sort of helped me to uh, understand, uh, you know, the measures that I need to take, uh, you know, or it probably it could be uh, helping me categorize my incoming request and based on the technician expertise or the group expertise, the request can be distributed and resolved on time if I automate my, uh, you know, assignment rules. So uh, this pretty much uh, covers up the, uh, the analytics that we have on the request history module. Now let's quickly jump on to the project analytics. So most of the project management software that are currently in the market are excellent at capturing project details, but do they really give you an insight to track the progress of the project from start to finish? You know, in most cases, it doesn't. So how many of you know about the, uh, the burn down chart? A uh, burn down chart uh, measures the work left to do versus time, which is actually a key part of agile uh, project management. Now, let me show you what uh, a burn down chart look like. So the burn down chart has two components, say the actual uh, completion trend and the ideal uh, completion trend. Now, let's say you have a project to upgrade your uh, Windows Server OS. And to complete this project, you have seven days. Uh, so the target to complete the project is before the deadline. And uh, to achieve this, the ideal way of working is to spend two hours, uh, you know, a day uh, to, uh, to be able to complete this before the estimated time. And uh, the green line in the report uh, tells you uh, if you spend two hours, then probably there are high chances that you would complete the project before the deadline. And I've learned uh, from one of the recent surveys, it is estimated that 80% of the project members invest a large amount of time only a day before or a week before uh, the project deadline. That's exactly uh, what the actual completion trend will measure. And uh, this tells you what amount of time your project member actually spent to complete this report. So uh, looking at this report, I can tell you uh, my project members have not spent the time for the first three days. And suddenly I see someone has put in a considerable amount of time 
on the fourth day and the fifth day and completed the project before the estimated time. So one thing you have to understand in the burn down chart would be, so if the red line is uh, below the green line, uh, which means you are ahead of the actual schedule, which is actually good because uh, I see that someone has put an incredible amount of time uh, so that my uh, you know actual action uh, on the project went ahead of the schedule and I was able to complete on my time. And especially for a project manager, these burn down reports are great because these burn down report uh, displays the current status at any given point in the time and uh, it shows the impact of the decisions that you make and it warns you early if things aren't going according to the plan. So the analytics on the project module help you track uh, project and the milestone progresses using this burn down charts. And uh, we also have uh, a dedicated dashboards for this project analytics. So the burn down and the burn up dashboard will help you track the uh, project and the milestone progress without having to open each project, each milestone and tasks. And we also have a, a dedicated dashboard uh, for the project manager that talks about the active projects, the active milestones, uh, the delayed projects and everything. So this dashboard would give you uh, an overview and helps you, uh, you know, actually um, maintain your projects better. Great. Now we have uh, the last uh, module, the solution analytics. It's always a constant uh, struggle to deliver amazing customer service. When you're buried in support tickets and live chats, you find yourself answering the same questions repeatedly. It can feel incredibly frustrating. When you hit this wall, you may think, how can I scale uh, my customer support? How can I help more customers in less time with the same quality of service? Well, according to me, uh, a good knowledge base can scale out your customer support program while improving the overall customer experience. Uh, the, uh, you know, a good knowledge base helps customers solve problems on their own. So you need to understand, uh, you know, the following things, because uh, when you create a, a knowledge base, you should understand the effectiveness of it. Uh, you should, uh, you know, actually measure the usage and you should also, uh, you know, actually track the top solution contributor. Well, the out of the box dashboard on the solution module delivers exactly that. So now let's take a look at the uh, dashboard. So yeah, the total solutions that were uh, created uh, so far is 50 and we have 20 solutions that is in the uh, pending approval status and we haven't published any solutions so far and the top solution contributor seems to be Jennifer Joe and the top solution user is Ed Arms. so probably uh, if we take a look at uh, a report that talks about the uh, solution usage by the technicians as you see Ed uh, he used uh, a, the solution 27 times, and um, this could definitely reduce Ed Holmes, uh, you know, resolution time. And I'm sure he would make his customers happy. So uh, there are you need to find out the correlations, and uh, the dashboard would definitely give you an overview on your solution modules. Great, and uh, you know, if I if I was a manager, I would really present uh, a special gift to Jennifer Joe for being the top solution contributor while building a library to create more happy customers and save a lot of time for the technicians. All right, so uh, you know, these are the different uh, analytical um, you know modules that we have introduced in the latest version. And I would also like to talk about uh, some of the cool features that we have recently introduced. The first in the list is the data alerts, which is my favorite feature. Data alerts helps you uh, stay tuned with metrics, 
that matters the most by simply configuring an alert. And uh, for example, if you want to make an informed business decision, you need to track key changes in your business data. And to be honest, manually monitoring all the important changes in your business data is next to impossible. So with data alerts, you can set up uh, varying levels of conditions, uh, you know, and you could be uh, notified in app or in an email. So let me show you uh, how we can configure the data alerts. So, uh, you know, according to this report talks about the SLA compliance trend. And if I want to set an alert uh, to, to, to uh, tell me uh, if the SLA compliance uh, goes below 90%, uh, you know, I can set an alert and this can uh, pretty much give me a uh, notification through email or I could get a notification in the app when I log in. So the next feature is the commenting. So comments let you collaborate with your colleagues like never before, because comments uh, let you start a real-time conversation uh, with your uh, collaborators uh, to discuss, uh, you know, around the key business metrics, uh, facilitating the uh, the collab, you know, the clients and the user to make some collaborative decision making. So all you have to do is just, uh, you know, share this report with them and invite them to this. Uh, a commenting feature and they you can pretty much discuss about metrics that would uh, matter the most and uh, make some brilliant decisions with your discussions and the next one i would like to really talk about is our visualizations so we have introduced dark themed dashboard and this comes uh, with uh, the six new preset themes uh, that we have introduced for the dashboards uh, with the options to customize dashboards, colors, styles, and the uh, report palettes. Uh, this will uh, this will be very beneficial uh, for uh, you know for users who want to embed their content uh, you know in their website, and this can uh, be uh, suited based on your website or the applications. So I can just go to this theme section. And I can pick uh, the different themes that I uh, I can I want. So there are uh, six preset themes, and you can also customize your own uh, themes here for this dashboard. And uh, Analytics Plus now lets you input uh, data from uh, CSV, Excel, uh, JSON, HTML, and any zip files that are basically stored on uh, any cloud drives, uh, such as um, a Dropbox or Google Drive, OneDrive, or Box. Uh, that way uh, it enhances your uh, reporting and the analytical capability. And you can also schedule a periodical import from your cloud drive, so the data is always kept live. Right, uh, so if you would like to uh, download the free 30-day trial for analytics, please scan this QR code um, and once again, this is Analytics Plus uh, free 30-day trial, the business intelligence solution from Manage Engine, which helps you visually analyze your help desk metrics and combine your help desk data with the data from other applications. So if you're already using Analytics Plus and Service Desk, please upgrade to the latest version of both products to get these new reports automatically. I hope you have enjoyed the webinar and I will leave you all with a simple question. Uh, why spend hours generating reports when you have Analytics Plus? Think about it. I'll meet you all soon with a fascinating topic. Until then, it's Guna signing off. Have a great day.